In 1996, I photographed Nelson Mandela in London, the closest I've ever been to being paparazzi. He was, he was uh, leaving the building, and I was wedged in the crowd, three rows back, behind a metal fence, and thinking, there is absolutely no way I will even get to see him, let alone get a picture. But he approached close to where I was. Everyone was so excited. Hands were reaching out from behind me, in front of me, trying to shake his. And then he bent down to a boy of maybe 12 in the front row. And he asked in that amazing voice, so, young man, tell me, what are you going to do with your life? As a humanitarian photographer, I've had the privilege to complete more than 70 assignments all over the world, but one trip stands out, Ethiopia, 2000. They called it the Green Famine. Rains had come early and the crops had failed again, and I was looking at the human cost of climate change. I was photo editor and photographer for an NGO in London at the time, and after the trip in a staff meeting, I told the story of Tamarit and his nine-year-old daughter, Judy. Back in Ethiopia, I'd caught Tamarit's eye from across the crowd. He turned as if giving permission for the photo. I knew the story. We'd met the family the day before. Judy was in such pain she'd struggled to turn to face the camera. Now she was wearing what looked like torn and dirty rags. I could see her ribs her badly swollen eye, and Tamarit. What a brave man, but this look, desperate exhaustion, worn thin from three years of crop failure, where all he could do was watch his children die. Tamarit was still in Ethiopia, and back in that room you could cut the atmosphere with a knife. There was so much more I could have said, background details, statistics. My boss even came up to me afterwards and said, Jim, you know, you really didn't say that much. But I had the photo. The photo told the story. And, and if we want to communicate well, we need this. The story of courage in the face of seemingly insurmountable difficulty and the photo to prove it. We never know where life will take us. When I was young, about eight, I remember a conversation with my mother. She had a bookmark about the world's poor, and I remember I commented with something like, we all have a part to play. We, we're all in this together. We all have a responsibility. At 14, I was looking at cameras, peering in the shop windows at the cameras and their price tags. I remember my uncle's expensive camera and being told not to touch it. That was when I was 8, 14, and then when I was 17, my mother bought me an SLR camera from a mail order catalog, the one that looks like a real camera and just like my uncle's. It had a non-automatic lens. Not only did you have to manually focus, you also had to preset the aperture and then use another ring to stop it down before taking the picture. It, it was a complete dog to use that and a set of Time Life books on photography, the, the work of Dorothea Lang, her photo Migrant Mother, Walker Evans, other amazing photographers. I still think this kind of photography has an important role to play. I learned about honest photographers that were charged to capture a true image of the world, and it was while paging through those books I began to realize that photography is the only medium with the potential to capture reality. True photography, photography that tells the truth. At college, I had to choose the chance to go into movies or to continue with stills. And, and here's the thing, stills photography is about real life, the stuff that movies are made from. Movies are filtered, but photography is raw, real life, frozen in time, that has the power to make us stop, but not just stop. It has the power to make us act. In 1987, I went to Romania to photograph orphans and the impact of Nicolae Ceausescu's resettlement program. It was before the fall of the Berlin Wall. I hid my camera in the toolkit under the driver's seat with 10 rolls of film. We memorized the names and addresses of our contacts before crossing the border, burn the paper, 
bribed the bar guards with their favorite brand of cigarettes. The babies we saw were in metal cots, a dozen packed into empty rooms, nothing on the walls, and it was silent. The babies had cried themselves to sleep. No one was coming. Years later, a man came up to me and said, you're Jim Loring, aren't you? After seeing your presentation about orphans in Romania, I couldn't get it out of my head. In the end, I moved to Romania to work with orphans. True photography begins with intent, to dig a little deeper, understand better. When photographing in Brazil, I photographed a woman in a favela, a slum. I had my Nikon F3 film camera, showed the camera as if to ask permission. She shrugged, okay. I took one frame and wound on. That great sound of an old film camera. I took another, slowly winding on. It was a moment, more than just someone posing for the camera, but two people silently interacting with camera as witness. I'm watching you, watching me, watching you. So often people respond to the camera with a beaming smile, but this kind of picture gets beneath the skin to reveal how people feel about their lives when I'm not there. I took six frames, last shot, she's drawing back on a cigarette, as if acknowledging the gap between our two worlds. This photo of a mother and her young son, also in Brazil in the favela, Homes made from twisted metal and wood, kids playing with discarded toys. At one point, she pulled away from her son and looked back at him with a beaming smile full of love. The program there was transforming lives, providing an education, a decent meal, a safe place for the kids to play. True photography will not manipulate an image. It will not swap a background or change a facial expression. It captures only what is actually there. Dorothea Lang said, the camera is an instrument that teaches people to see without a camera. And for the photographer, well, they need to see everything. The background is like the stage where the action will take place. Then defining details, any detail that adds definition. A child holding an imaginary phone. A rope and chain hanging down in the middle of the picture. No straight lines. And this direct eye contact, just like the woman with the cigarette. In Mali, a blind man walks three days and nights with a single gallon of water to escape the 2012 rebel uprising. He slept with shepherds in the fields. His name is Sisley. He told of women who had been violated in public. My sister, Miriam, she ran away in shame. We've not seen her since. Cicely wept. This photo became the catalyst for a fundraiser at our local pizza place. The school had art for sale. African dance, music, incredible food, photos on the walls. We were sold out. It was such an incredible night. True photography will not sugarcoat, but neither should it just pull at our hearts. There's so much hope to be found in so many places around the world. This photo of a mother with her two babies. I was once told the greatest strength of the people in Mali is the ability to live with dignity in spite of poverty. Time and again, I've seen how a single picture cuts through all the noise, the silence of a room where you're captivated by the story. It's the thing that touches your heart, and that's the place where change begins. I know we're bombarded with images and media all day, but we dare not lose photography that tells the truth. And we better not lose photographers with the soul, skills, and determination to go get it. Look, here's the point. This is the point I hope you will remember. True photography matters. At a time when the truth itself is under attack, it's not just the image that's at stake, but the truth behind it. In years to come, others will look at our photos. Will they tell the truth? Or will they be the product of a fake generation obsessed with everything other than the truth?
we can fix it. Next time you're looking at a picture, next time you're tempted to make an adjustment, ask yourself, is it real? Does it tell the truth? It will take all of us, photographer and viewer alike, to resist the growing pressure to manipulate and distort reality. Our pictures do not need to be perfect, but they do need to be real. Who will it be? That next generation of photographers who will capture a true image of the world. I still think my eight-year-old self is right, that we're all in this together, and that true photography still has the power to bring about change. It can build bridges of connection and understanding. It can bring the world closer. It can still make a difference. And for that next generation of true photographers, Nelson Mandela, who knew all about making a difference, I can almost hear him say it now. What counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It's what difference we have made in the lives of others. Thank you.